Hey guys, this is Gaurav. Welcome to SaaS with ServiceNow. This is our follow-up session of ServiceNow developer training. Before I start, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Gaurav Tripathi. I have 9.5 years of experience in IT with 6.5 years of experience in ServiceNow, Architect Solutions and Project Delivery. If you remember, we talked about this particular topic in our last video, that was part five. We talked about common API and methods used in client scripts. And the discussion we had was about glide form. That was our first topic. Now in this particular video, we are going to talk about glide user. That is a second API we have used and, and that's what we use in client scripts. So let's take a look at how exactly you can utilize uh, glide user in your day to day development. This is my personal developer instance. Let's go to incident application. I will go to here open and then I will just go to client script. I will click here, go to client script and click here and I will create a new client script. So client script form is loaded. Now I will just give a name like demo for glide user. So we have already talked about glide form, but in this particular session, we are going to talk about glide user. So I have uh, incident table already selected type. I will select on load for now. And I have this on load function right here. So now I will show you that how many API methods we have for glide user. So if I type G underscore user, now, this is the object we use for glide user. So if I have this G underscore user, if I press dot. So now these are the methods we have for glide user. So you can see we have like first name, uh, get client data, get full name, has role. Now I will show you the utilization and what kind of data you can get from, from all these uh, methods you have for glide user. So if I start with first name and how exactly you can get these values. So in order to show you what I will do, I will do G underscore form basically. So I will start saving the data first. So let's create a variable, variable A, and I will use G underscore user dot. And this is the first name. Now, if I'm going down, and if I put here alert and I just put here the, the first name of user is and that is plus A. So I am saving this. I'm just putting the semicolon and I'm clicking on save. Now let's see what exactly it does. So you have this G underscore user dot first name. If I open any incident and I go here. Now, as you know, this will run on all the forms. That means that will be that it will run on on load basically every time form will load whatever condition it has it will just show it so now you can see it says first name of user is system now how it is picking the this particular first name now i am the current logged in user so if you want to populate current logged in users first name then you can utilize this method now let's take another example so I'm just making it as an as a comment. I will create another variable. I will put G underscore user dot. This time I will put get full name and it says returns the first name and last name of the current user. I press tab colon and I am just saving the form.
and just to show you in a home like this is how we have the scripting i just made like a full view basically now if i go to my form again and i reload it you will see the different value now you can see it says first name of the user is system administrator you can definitely change the verbiage we have right here now it is showing the current logged in users complete name then we go back to our scripting now let's comment this as well this time i will use another method so i have g underscore user dot Now we have this has role. So it says returns true if the current user has selected role or the admin. That means if this user has this role. So what we will do, we will put this. I can put the role which we I am looking for, maybe for example, ITIL. And I can put here if a equal to true. So if a equal to equal to true, then it should show the first name of the car is that's what. Let's see what value we get. The value of variable if I save this and I'm just reloading great so that means it is returning the true that means this system administrator has idle role and if you want to confirm what we can do I can go to the profile as of now it is self-service view i will go to default view i go at the bottom so it has admin role so it is returning as i mentioned that basically it is not searching for the idle role basically we mentioned so it doesn't have idle role but it still has admin role and that's the reason it is returning true but what if if we if we mention uh, maybe uh, for a user who doesn't have admin let's let's try with any non admin user so if i impersonate just an idle what do you think should it show that alert so let's take a look so if I click here, open any incident, that like similar incident we had. Yep, it says value of variable true. Now the reason we are getting this particular true alert because this user has idle role. But let's see if uh, any user who doesn't have idle role. So what I will do, I will just go to system administrator impersonation again i will try to search for a user who doesn't have admin role so maybe able tutor yep able tutor is just like a self-service user he doesn't have any kind of uh, like idle role or something so what i will do i will impersonate him this time but if I will do that, he will not be able to see the incident. So you might select any other role. So let's do one thing. If I go to my client script, So this is for demo for glide user client script 
So as you know, it, if it says if it has ITIL role, then it should show that it is true. And you can put any role you want. That's how it works. That's the reason even for that ITIL user we impersonated, it, it showed as true. Now let's comment this one and try to create a new one. We will have where a equal to g underscore user dot this time we have has role exactly that means returns only true if the current user has this specified role so it will check that this user has that role or not so maybe this time we will put has role exactly and we will put like maybe project manager or maybe knowledge let's let's put that knowledge role but I should not make it as comment now it should check whether the user has this particular role so if I have this if a equal to true so let's make it false and alert the user does not have knowledge role so we should definitely get this message even you are an administrator because you don't have knowledge role so I'm going here I'm reloading the form and yes we are getting that alert now let's try to impersonate a user who has this role so in that case what I will do I will go to role and I will search for knowledge role so this is the role we have and I'm just checking the user who has this role So we don't have that option, but I can add it. I can add the related list as now it is showing me the users who has this role. So this problem manager. So let's try to impersonate problem manager. So if I impersonate problem manager, I have this incident. I click here. Now you can see I did not get this alert message and the reason behind it because I have that role and that's the reason it is not showing me that alert. So this is the difference I just wanted to show you that how exactly it is making the difference and checking the value that whether that particular user has that role or not. So if your customer has any requirement which is somehow related that they want to check some kind of roles or with that roles they want to have some other conditions or some actions or some messages they want to display you can do it with the help of g underscore user. So I will go to client script. Then we have other methods as well. Let's take a look. That is GN score user dot. Now you can see we have has role from list. Now this is something you can put the list of roles you want to check. And that's what it is showing. Returns true if the current user has at least one of the specified role in the comma separated list or admin role. 
so or admin role will definitely be there so if the role which you want to check if user has that role or not then the next we have is has roles now you have self-service users who don't have in any kind of roles if you want to check it then you can check with this particular um, method that if the current logged in user has any single role at least a single role then it should it it should return true and then you can utilize that value of true as per the logic or conditions or situations you have as per the requirement then we have last name so as we we were able to get the value of first name you can also get the value of last name then we have user id now user id will give you the sys id of that user record so let's take a look so this time i will put user id so i have this user id i press tab And I will mention here, I will just remove it and I will do sys ID of current user and that will be plus A and I am saving this. But before seeing the result, let's check the sys ID of this. So if I go to my profile, it says copy society. I'm copying it and I'm just like saving it for now. So you can see it starts with 6816 and with 441. And I'm going to the incident form. I'm reloading it. Now you can see we were we are able to get the same society. So if you want to get the society of the current logged in user and you want to utilize it in any of your scripting, then you can use g underscore user dot get user ID. Now, if I go back to my scripting. And then we can check if we have any other method. Then we have just username. And this would just return the username. And that is also the part of your user profile. So if you go to the user profile and just select the default view. So this is what we have username. The label is user ID, but the name of the field is username. Now, if you want to get the username of the current logged in user, then you can get it with the help of get username. So this is all about the G underscore user. That means Glide user API we have in client script. So thanks for watching my video. Please subscribe, like and share my channel and have a great day.